Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the back office. I've been to the Arts and Crafts shop mm, to get some acrylic paints because I want to see how easy it is to paint up these uh, retro net units, which are made out of um, acrylic uh, resin. Basically, let's just call it resin. I can't remember which kind, um, but I think acrylic paints should do the trick. So I have myself some Universal Primer, big old thing of that. And I've got a selection of colours, so I hopefully can get a nice retro brownie there, orangey there. Um, I also want to try these paints with an airbrush. And if you've tried it in the past, you'll know that airbrushing regular non-airbrush paints can be a bit of a, a chore, uh, an impossibility actually sometimes. But we'll see. But my first... Uh, you know, basic um, question to, my, to, to to myself, the test, the experiment, is to see whether or not it'll even take acrylic paint, because if it doesn't, then we're not gonna be doing anything. So I'll put a nice bit down there. Fortunately, these paints were relatively cheap. So I got that big old tube of white for about three pounds, and this pack of 12 colors for, ooh, I think it was two pounds or two pound 50. Either way, not much. So let's just do the old hand brushed finish for now. Again, not very happy with hand brushing things, purely because it's not only time consuming, it actually uh, isn't a great finish. So yeah, airbrush will definitely be the way to go. Even rattle can, I might try some rattle can as well, but I've got quite a few of these sorts of things to play around with. You can always give it a rub down as well. So I'm not, I'm not gonna go nuts with it. I'm just uh, going to paint around the edges, basically. Leave the base for now. Now with this shape, because you've got these sort of grill aperture things in it, that always causes a problem when you're brush finishing. Because look there, you can see it collecting. It's like a brush cleaner almost at that point. So that's really why you want to airbrush these things. Not quite sure even how to... Uh, handle that. I'm just going to brush this through then. Brush all that through. Brush that last bit where my thumb is. Thumbprint on it. And then just sort of whisk whisk it. Whisk it down and out of the way. Oh, but then that collects it on the top. See? That's why you can't win. You just can't win. Good. Well, I mean, it's taking, it looks like it's taking the primer anyway, so I'll just leave that there. That'll be test piece number one. And I do have uh, some other bits, which are these sort of 3D prints, which, again, they're not in resin, but they're actually in PLA. And yeah, look, they're taking it quite nicely too, so you could potentially just paint your 3D prints. One day my prints will come. I'm just realising I squirted out way too much of this primer as well. I don't know what I'm going to do with that rest of that big blob. Hopefully not waste it. Let's go around painting everything. Yeah, I think that's okay. I mean, acrylic was what we used to use when we used to paint the little Warhammer type miniature things and they could be metal or plastic or anything. So, uh, yeah. That's going to need a lot of coats though to cover that green. We'll come back when these things have dry and we'll try some uh, of the colours on them. So while I wait for those shapes to dry, I've put some uh, blobs on this bit of cardboard to sort of clean up the brush mainly, because I made a big blob of paint. So that we'll have a look at these paints. So these were, um, this is Artist's Loft, apparently. Just to let you know though, that uh, white paint is Peb, Pebeo, Pebe, Studio Clicks. That that is good. I like that. That's got decent coverage, it seems. So these are the colours I've got here, ranging from white, yellow, ochre, vermilion, crimson red, hookers green, viridian, marine blue, cobalt blue, sienna, raw umber, and lamp black. All the colours. Andrew's got all the colours. It's open all the colours. So I thought what would be good though is just to kind of um, paint onto those white blobs some of the more retrospective colours. I've noticed though, I don't know how you make a grey because a lot of computers back in the day were grey or beige. 
Sorry for the jump cut, sort of minor family, not emergency, not even anything really, but just a disturbance. Right, that's fine, at least these are a little bit further along in their curing process, so we'll move those out of the way and we'll have a play. So my train of thought though was saying I didn't have any greys or particular colours, so I might have to learn to mix some until I you know, can find certain colours. So uh, I think the best thing to do really is just probably just experiment um, and try some of these things. So to give you an example, if we we're going to try to go for a grey, well this is a sort of Atari ST mouse, we won't go for that colour because it's a bit ye <laughs> yellowed, but that's probably the more uh, realistic colour there. Um, I don't know, we're going to need maybe a bit of white and a bit of um, black, but this is where we get into the whole colour mixing thing. But I kind of want to try to get at least one kind of grey going, uh, sort of ivory or beige, just because. Ooh, we've got to pop these. That's the uh, kind of uh, colour of of the uh, period. So, so I'm just going to use tiny amounts of this because there's not much paint here, and uh, I want plenty to experiment with. So there's a drop of white, ever so slight amount of white there. And we're going to put an even smaller amount of black. I don't know if I can even achieve the tiniest amount of black that I <laughs> No. Let's see if I can suck some back up. It's about as good as it's going to get, I'm afraid. So this is lamp black. I'm going to use a smaller, smaller brush here, slightly damp. It's going to take the ever so slight amount. You can just see that just on the tip of the brush, tiniest amount of black. Just see if we can that a little bit. Well that's certainly a grey, um, but I'm not saying that's more of a beige, a beigey beige. So I'm not sure what we'd want to add to that. Um, maybe a tiniest amount of this. This is the yellow ochre. Yellow ochre. So I've just been reading, uh, rereading actually. <laughs> Uh, Jasper Ford's Shades of Grey. So I'm starting to appreciate all of these colours a little bit more now because actually that's not bad. The only downside is it's pretty much drying out on the card. Um, but yeah, that's definitely not a bad uh, blend there. Maybe just ever so slightly uh, lighter. And that's the benefit of course of these sort of acrylic paints that they really do dry out almost instantly. So you really have to water them down or try to do it something to extend their sort of pot life if you're going to mess around with them. But if you're going to airbrush them, you're probably going to dilute them quite a lot anyway. But look, that that's not bad. I mean, it's it's kind of still quite grey. I mean, we could just do with a really old big lump of white. That's that's a big old splodge of white there. Maybe white and yellow ochre and ever so slightest amount of black is your pigment blend. But you can see how you go with it, you just keep going really. I mean let's let's take one of these things I did, for example, and let's see how Atari ST like the finish is before this all dries out on the bench here. Pretty good. Go okay, get that on there. <laughs> that is not bad at all, really. And even if I do say so myself, I'm just going to add a tiniest amount of water because this is drying up like nuts. And that's going to affect my translucency, though. I'm appreciate I appreciate that, but it will let me work it a little bit longer, at least as a base. Yeah, that is pretty good, I think. Again, I'm just I'm just applying it almost as if it's just a undercoat. You know, we know this isn't this isn't going to be a finished coat by any means. But just for something for us to assess the uh, color, I think I think that will do quite well. I'm just going to pop it down this way so at least I can try to get a little bit more 
strokes, but this side is looking pretty dicey where my fingers have been. Yeah, okay, so that would be my Atari ST shade. Okay, just trying to feather that. Wipe me ends. Yeah, that's not bad at all. I mean, look at it there. Pretty good, pretty good. So what other trade? We've only got, we've got one more unit here, basically, that's made up. And uh, the other popular color, of course, is sort of ZX Spectrum Black, um, which is kind of easy to do, to be honest, to paint one black. But I guess, I guess we'll still go ahead and have a go. Um, something I need to do is get hold of a, a sort of Commodore 64 or something so we can see what a um, what sort of colouring those were. I kind of I can't really remember them exactly what they were. I can remember the shape. I can remember the thing. I can't remember if they were really a brown or a um, a beige or you know a combination of the two. That black is gorgeous though. Look at that black. It's like a dark, dark, rich, 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 rich black. Lamp black. Hmm. I don't know what, what, what lamp, what type of lamp they're referring to, but it was a dark, bloody lamp, whatever it is. So I'm just going to try to hold this by this port on the back so I can get to all the uh, sides and things, but that is quite satisfyingly black. It's like it's sucking the light out of the room. That's, that's, that's about as dark a pigment as I think you can ever get. It's crazy. That'll be fun to airbrush that one because it's going to be really um, trying to block up the uh, airbrush if you don't cut that down. But look at this paint goes on so well. It gives you a really good base for working on because you could just prime it. You know, we've primed it with white and you've used this layer of black, but you could then sand this back down very finely and give it another go, and uh, you know you're going to get a lovely smooth, rich finish. And I guess that's really why a lot of the uh, model making paints are uh, effectively water based acrylic paints like this just because they are fun to work with it's almost too thick this way there we go there's just a couple of little bits there I can see where there were some air bubbles there we go edge of the brush dash it in beautiful so there we've got two beautiful retro net finishes there I'm going to zoom in just to show you Again, that tarry mouse colour, look, mm, not bad, it's not bad at all. I mean, it's going to clean the brush a tiny bit. We've still got a tiny bit of that yellow ochre there. And uh, you can just get a little bit of a curiosity to see what, what's it like if you mix it with, with a bit of black. Um, yeah, you're going to get some sort of weird grey there. But if you want a really retro colour, I think, you could go for uh, probably a yellow. A yellow and something else. Um, I've just got, actually, a um, another unit over here. And this is a retro net unit that um, you know, I had issues with the casting. So it's still early prototype issue. In fact, that you can see it's a bit too thin on the bottom. Um, USB port, everything there. We can see what, um, how you know, necessary or unnecessary it is to prime them. I think priming is always necessary to fill out holes and those little air bubbles. This isn't a great piece, this one, but we, we can have a go with it. And um, I'm wondering if it's fun just to go a whole, you know, something crazy like uh, this vermilion. Should we just do a vermilion one? So this will be a non-primed vermilion. I'm going to put the paint over here, just a tiny, tiny amount. Um, I think it could look quite funky, <laughs> but this is a, an actual one. This isn't a space model. This is a working retro net. So this could be interesting for the um, new owner of this, or who, new owner of this prototype unit. But yeah, it's a bit translucent. I'm going to admit. Um, I think that I would advise priming it, advocate, always prime it, that's going to be my uh, advice there. In fact you can see it thinning out as I brush it, but there is water on the brush. Let me clean this brush up properly. Yeah, good quality brush that is. <laughs> I, I was resining something earlier, I wish I saved a bit of it. There we go, 
that's all right though. I used brute force to fix that on. Let me give this a wipe. Okay, so we'll wipe that down. Let's try it again, just with some neat. Now that there's you know no water on the brush, just see if we can get some better coverage. Yeah, we can get a better coverage. Still not great, but it's definitely better. Definitely a bit too much water on it last time. But I think a second coat and it'll probably be okay. It's not going to cover the black of the port where it's exposed there. So that will need some work. Interestingly enough, you can see there where the antenna of the unit is showing through the translucent part of the resin. I guess that'll be a good yardstick that when you can't see that, you've probably reached it. I'm going to try avoiding getting too much in this. USB port. That will make things difficult. I'm just going to put a light coat here because I know we're going to do a second. I know it's going to need it. I, just, I feel it in my waters there. Uh -huh. Just going to touch that. I'm just holding all these by the bases so that none of them have a painted base at the moment. Just to sort of show you there, it's getting quite good, um, good coverage. This could be one to uh, rub down gently and then do a second coat on. But now a good test will be a really good test will be actually on the bottom you can see there there's a chip showing through. I'm just going to paint that area there we can see on subsequent coats how many it sort of takes to get rid of that. It's almost drying in my hands though, I can feel it drying. This paint is a very good quick dryer. But uh, I'm going to just put a Lego block here so it's not sitting totally on its bottom. Okay, so they've got a chance of peeling it off later. But there is a fine trio, a fine trio of retro nets. And I think that orange is probably a bit like um, an Auric. I think there was a, a version of the Auric that came out in that, that shade. So that's a kind of quite a nice, wonderful retro, retro shade. So yeah, I hope that's been of some interest to you. If you want to do some painting and you want to do some retro painting, get your acrylic colours and you can start playing and getting some colour matches. So uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, in fact, I'm wondering now I might paint my Atari mouse because the mouse looks a bit dated. In fact, do you want to see a, uh, a better condition Atari mouse? I do have a better condition Atari mouse. I'll put that next to it for you. And you can see really how close that is. There you go. That really is close, isn't it? As ever, guys, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.